so you want to start a theater ministry. Huh? Which is kind of a comparity that we took from uh, uh, Sinbad, my wife and I, when we created this several years ago. And actually, uh, we started this session as a response to a, a church that uh, had hot asked us to come in and present. And when we came in, we didn't have any idea on how we did what we did or what was the abilities and the resources of the people that we were working with. So the idea was we want to start a theater ministry, they said. It. So we figured, huh, you really want to do that? And so the question is, and this is a question for you, which is why? Why do you want to start a theater ministry? And more importantly for each of you at this point here, why are you here? What do you want to take away? What, what do we want to share in the next few minutes? That's an open question for everybody here. So, um, why are you here? Why did you choose this session? That's what we're saying. Just before I came, I was trying to analyze this thing about theater and realized that our church has an old sanctuary that can seat 100, 150 people and it would be perfect for a, a theater okay. presentation. And also, as you said in, in your other talk about, we used to we used to incorporate more drama, okay. and we did too okay. in our church. And I think we have enough people now. We we our church has grown from 300 to 1500 in five years, okay. and and we have talent and we have people, but it seems like people that are in leadership are very busy, and so I said, is this something for me to do? I don't know. Okay. So you, you have the personnel, you think, and, and want to know maybe how to use the space better is part of what I understand. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Good. Why else? Why else are you here? Yes, sir. One word in that PowerPoint. Yes. Transform transformation. Transformation. Which um, is this um, aspect of theater and tribal society, which are called transformances. Um, theater that is done to culturally change identities of people in that culture and their culture transformances. Okay. So a live theater that would happen, but it would be an actual live event okay. that's changing identity of people in that culture. Okay, so, so go ahead. Yeah, I want to, and this is like brand new for me, so sure. I want to learn some foundation of theology of, of, of theater. Okay. And you're really hitting with that. Okay, foundation of theology, yes. using the space, and affecting the culture. Why else? Yes, yes sir. Um, my word from that list would be unification. Unification. I have spent so many years in church, listening, paying attention, watching, uh, and I've spent so many years on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to find a way to bring the two together. This is this is new to me. How is it? How is that done? Okay. And uh, just yeah, just basically how. I know why. Okay. But uh, but uh, practically. Okay. Practical ways for unification. Yes, sir. So for me, I've, I've actually started drama programs in a few different churches. Okay. Uh, and first one was about 20 years ago when I was just fresh out of college and green as they come. And uh, for me, it's another voice in the wilderness about, about um, perspective. Okay. Hi. Hi. Another voice in the embassy. Join us. Thank you. And seeing as how, see, this is that the, the trick is, you you invite people down front. Ah, uh, <laughs> boy. You see, got you. Okay. And and then you get to get real intimate and say, "Oh, Mary." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got you. you. See, now we have a fuller house, and here's the question: Everything's fine. <laughs> the question is, why are you here? Why did you pick this session? <laughs> why did both of you? You're not married. I'm not married. Who are you? I'm Michael. Mary and Michael. Not quite like Mary and Martha, but <laughs> that's okay. Mary and Michael. Why, did you, why, why are you here? Why did you choose this issue? Um, the interest, it, it was just, um, it was interesting what we've learned being here okay. with the theater. Okay. Um, my son is Christian hip hop. So, okay. um, um, just the idea of taking what he does and putting, going the next level in that, and with interpretation, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm still wrapping around and I've been making notes for myself on adding something new to what he does. Okay. So, All right. that's it in a nutshell.
Stephanie? Um, drama, I guess I'll say. It speaks really strongly. It communicates strongly in the place that I live in. And so, um, I just came here to see what, uh, starting something like that would look. Okay. I mean, I don't think that I will, but maybe incorporating more aspects okay. into the ministry that I already do. Cool. So I just came here to, to learn, really. I just wanted to see what you had to say. Okay. So. More aspects. All right, I'm going to step aside. This is for you guys recording here, because I have to step back and move this tape. This I don't say stationary very often. So, what we're talking about here is starting a theater ministry. What we have discovered as a, a ministry ensemble, Kingdom Impact Theater, since we actually began the ministry, was how it itself, theater as a, as a outreach and discipling tool, has shifted. So the basics of starting a ministry, just as a, for the sake of doing, not for the sake of doing theater, was one thing when we began. We've discovered it has shifted to incorporate a broader spectrum, to include how things have changed and they're new, and that's part of what we'll talk about today and how we came up with this, which is like the subtitle of the session, the theater of worship, and that's what we want to think about in the process of unification. Yes, there are things to do for that are just about doing theater, a program, an event, a, uh, a special section during a service. Those are all theater. But things that we have been exposed to in the last two days are also theater. And are they also worship? And can we take those different elements of diversity, Byron was saying, I think a second ago, and make them Worshipful and theatrical, so that's that's part of the journey. Um, so when we talk about the theater of worship, these are the elements that I have found helpful in establishing that unification that we talked about: anticipation, expectation, unification, participation, transformation, and. Anticipation. Now, when you see that list collectively, how does that speak to you? What do you think it's saying? A theater of worship. Anticipation, expectation, unification, participation, transformation, and again, anticipation. I, um, don't go ahead, please. Uh, I see a dialogue. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you go and you meet someone and you're about to sit at the table to have a dialogue, you have all of these happening. Okay. And then you leave anticipating how the world will change based on what you've learned. Okay. How the world will change based on what you've learned. I was thinking it's, it looks cyclical. Okay. And so it just keeps keeps evolving, keeps turning. Okay. Okay. Other thoughts? This is kind of an idea of looking at our services of worship, which is my phrase for corporate worship time, worship service. Corporate worship time is a service of worship. Language being, if I say worship service, that means something. If I say service of worship, that means something else. How do you see those two different phrases? Worship service, service of worship. Okay. 
where the service of worship, okay, worship is an active process. Okay. So, if we recall this, they're both accurate ideas, but if we recall this a, a service of worship, these are the things, theoretically, to be active. Okay? I had an experience. Who's been to a theater lately? Like a, a, a play. What happens? What happens when you go to a play? Starting with before you get there, what happens? Anticipation. Okay. What is the Okay. Anticipation. What are some of the elements of that? <clears throat> Let's see what's next. Let's see if it finds out. Okay. These would be the elements which we equated. <clears throat> Atmosphere, the liturgy or the show. There are elements of music. There's benediction. Okay. There's spreading the word, and then there's your vision and your mission. Any theatrical performance that you see, from the playwright's creation to the director's decision to the producer's choice takes these into account, but in a, in a professional commercial production, they may not break it down the same way. But I have seen this because of the shows that I've been the director or, or been in as a writer or producer. I've seen this parallel with our construct. Okay. Translating that setup of a theatrical production to the church gives us the theater of worship, which is a service of worship, which allows us to look at that time, the corporate time together, not just as a an hour, but a corporate experience that might transform all the people. Yes. Okay. We're setting it up as the producers, as the writers, as the directors, for the experience of the people who are coming, who may or may not know about Jesus Christ, just as if you're going to see MAME, or you're going to see Angels in America, or whatever the theatrical production is, you may or may not know what's going on there. But you're going to come to have that, as we've talked a lot here, corporate experience, diverse experience, to create something beyond. And so these ideas go into our corporate time, and as we'll see, we can also translate those to the specific event time. Okay? What are those specific events? It's very important when we decide what we're going to do theatrically, whether it's corporate time or a specific performance, why are we doing it? That's why I asked you why you're here. Why do people come to church, period? Do we ask ourselves that when we are planning the corporate worship time? Do we know who that audience is? Do we know what we want them to take away? So whether you're doing a theater performance or you're doing worship time, do we in our planning understand and ask why? And when do we ask that? Is it early enough or not? Steve Pedersen, who is the uh, drama director at Willow Creek, when we started this, and Willow Creek Community Church outside Chicago was one of the first real transformative artistic megachurches mm -hmm. uh, and had a very vibrant, very broad, very well-resourced uh, theater, uh, pointed out several things that we should take into account when we are planning a theater or however we're going to use the arts. We have, a, we have found drama to be a very powerful way to introduce and reinforce various biblical topics that are presented. Beginning a drama group with the purpose of performing regularly in the church is not an easy task. And we have all discovered that over the years by whatever we're trying to do. 
We want to avoid being preachy, of course. But you also have to set a structure for when people are going to come, when your your actors and your your set designers and all. But they also have to have a purpose. What Willow would do would have an hour, hour and a half weekly rehearsal. And then it might be another four or five hours as they got closer to the production, depending on what it was done, whether it was every week or they had a major production. So you have to take into account what the rehearsal and planning time is. You've got all the other things going on. If Who, who was here last night and saw the, the presentations? Anybody? What did you see among the actors that were there? What did they, what did they use? What, it was on the stage, however. Yeah, the elements, stage props, costumes. stage props, costumes, what else? Uh, recorded music. Recorded music. Yeah. All of those elements, good evening, all of those elements go into perhaps a five minute scene. But that five minute scene has been wisely, if it's done right, in pre production earlier. <coughs> got more technology involved, even as what you observed here with us trying to set that up. Those are hours and hours and hours that are used that our people may or may not, our people who work with may or may not wish to participate in. And so you do have a drop off. So it's very important to understand why you're doing it, who you want to reach, recognize the time commitment it's going to take. If you're going to start a full-fledged ministry. Have all that together before you get to the point so that when you start recruiting people, which is actually the last thing, you've already planned how you're going to staff it, who you're going to need, and then look at the resources of where it fills in. Don't talk yourself out of something because when you look at the process, it seems like it's undaunted. Um, God provides you know, what you need to ask for. And there will be people who will say, we can't do this. This is why we had that separation I was talking about yesterday. We can't do it. It's too much. Too much time. Too much money. We don't have, we don't have the people. Where are we going to get them? Now, you with the vision come in. Who's the person with the vision? The person with the vision for anything that we wish to do artistically is the pastor. If you don't have a pastor or a person in a significant perspective to say, this is how the arts, and theater in this case, can be used to build the kingdom, to be missional, you've really got a struggle. Why do you want to do it? We wish to reach, as we heard yesterday, different types of people, people groups. You know, we've, we've heard uh, uh, special needs. We've heard veterans. We've heard all of those folks come into your church for whatever reason, but can you justify and explain why you want to have those people come? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like getting the leadership of your church on the same page. So, here are four areas where you can use and support your, your theater habit, as it were, where you can use theater even if you don't have a huge ministry that wishes to commit to doing regular productions like what the Willow did. Okay? Worship leading, evangelistic outreach, celebration of the season, whatever the holiday is, and biblical education. Those are the four primary areas where you can really use theater to reach people missionally. It has to be intentional. We say worship leading, how do you anticipate, what do you think might be a subset of that? Of worship leading? How could you use a, a theater piece to help lead worship? A drama inserted to uh, enhance okay. what the message might be. And here's what we're going to do. I'm your pastor, okay? And. <clears throat> You have just told me, you're coming to me with a proposal. Alright? You're coming to me with a proposal, and you want to you wanna start a theater ministry, huh? <laughs> well, that's going to cost a lot of time, a lot of money. We don't have the resources. 
We've tried it before. Sell me on this. And the way I want you to sell me on this is, is I might say uh, something to you that you don't like to hear. When you respond to me, I want you to start your sentence with yes and. And if you hear somebody make, an idea, make a statement that you support or you have a different perspective about, you can, you can share that, but you, your first two words are yes and. You got me? Good? All right, so let me, let me understand this. You want to start a theater ministry, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot of money, manpower, resources that we don't have right now. And you said that uh, you could use a, a theater doing worship leading or evangelistic outreach, uh, celebrate the season, or biblical education. Those are four things you said where you could use theater. So, uh, you said uh, some kind of theater to, to, for the sermon, right? Enhance the worship, uh, yeah. Yes, and okay, enhance the worship. Uh, you, said, you said the sermon. You could do a, a, a thing to... To work with you, Pastor. Um, in, in communicating this message and using uh, some of the gifts of the people that we have. Yes, and, and that all sounds huge, but if we start small and work up to that, I, I think we can do that. Yes, okay, start small. All right, so what do you mean for me? To, like, just, just for the sermon thing, the worship thing, what do you mean for me? We're going to use some theater to, to mess with my sermon. How about if we, how about if you, uh, we try and and uh, uh, let me know what you're doing for the sermon, and, and uh, we'll come up with our group. And how do you feel the Lord is leading you and lead, in leading the congregation, and in, uh, in what area? You want me? To, you want me to tell you what I'm going to plan to say? To say is that what you're saying? Is that what he's saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and what else do you need? Okay. Okay. So I need to tell you. How much time do you need? Um, Anybody. How much time can you give us? I tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you a help. We help you out here. Okay. I'm going to do a series in the Sermon on the Mount. What do you need to know? Scriptural references. You know where the Sermon on the Mount is? Yes. I do. You need a Bible? Uh, no. <laughs> what about uh, 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 the the emphasis then on, on what you're doing on the Sermon on the Mount? Are you making that? Uh, personal for each one of us? Are you making historical? You tell me. You're the one that wants to do the sermon, so let's see here. No, you no, no. I want you to do the yes sermon. And. Yes, yes and. and. Yes. You want me to do what? Yes, and I, uh, I want, no, I want you to be, uh, I, I want your message to be enhanced. I don't want to take over the message. I want you to be enhanced, and your message to be enhanced. Yes, and my answer to that is, who's got your Bible? Mm -hmm. Who's got your Bible? Here? Oh, that's right. So I'm going to do a sermon on the ser series on the Sermon on the Mount. You need to know what the Sermon on the Mount says. You think? Got it. So you have your Bibles here. Pull your Bibles out. And let's take a look at it. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Take out your Bible. Somebody find the Sermon on the oh. Mount. Collect Two five. Two and five. All right. So I'll give you this much. Okay. I'll give you this guidance. I see what you're saying. I'm going to do a series in the Sermon on the Mount. I need to bring the public in. Let's read this and see what we can come up with. When you read the Sermon on the Mount, think about any songs that you know from the verses. Think about any uh, visuals that might go along with it. Think about any acting that might be done. Think about anything that you've seen uh, the last couple of days and read it. And here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, I need uh, three people to come up here and read this for me. I'm just kind of curious what this might sound like. So three people come up here and read this. Sorry, I'll be <coughs> so, okay. I want you to uh, step over this way a little bit, right about here. And I want you to read this, this Sermon on the Mount. This is a, your audience. How about that? I want you to read this. Uh, how many verses in this? It's three chapters. <laughs> Just this, okay. So, so let's narrow it down. How about uh, what would be the most uh, important thing if we just started this experience? Verses 3 to 12. <coughs> Wait, is those are the B, those are called what? Yeah. 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 All right, so here's what we're going to do. All right. This is the congregation. 
They don't know this story. How many verses are in this? Three to twelve. It's nine. Nine verses. Nine. Three. 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 Start. Second three. <coughs> I want the three of you to read this so that they are engaged. All right. I want you to pay attention and see if any songs come to mind, anything to come to mind to, to show this, but see what happens. Okay. You can start. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for Him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall have mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Okay, okay. There's some, there's some possibilities here. How do you feel? <coughs> are you, Pastor? Yes. Are you uh, are you planning on doing this for a certain amount of weeks, dividing it up into certain? Uh, you tell me. You tell me. We got nine. How many verses? We had nine verses. Nine verses. Mm -hmm. What can we do? What's the best way to? Uh, to create this so that we could really study and, and, and use this as an outreach. All at once? Yes and I'll say, um, look for themes. That's one of the things that jumped out at me. What's the theme that jumped out there? Um, those, blessed are those who are poor and needy when we realize that we need that spiritual support and humility in Christ. All right. You have any uh, thoughts along this line? Um, let me say that uh, God looks out for those who are persecuted, so that's somewhat of a um, responding on the thing will maybe a protector. All right. Yes. Let me ask you this. Do you have any music that you've ever done or heard that might fit one of this? Let's use this one thing. Persecution. Do you have any music that you've done, heard? Um, yes. You do? Good. Uh, have you, think about what that is. Do you have any, any visuals? Can you see if we took a theme of persecution? What that might look like. Anything we saw up there? A comic strip, perhaps. Yes? And? Good. Who is speaking here? Jesus. Alright. Did you get that sense that Jesus was speaking? Anybody? Or was it just words being read? No, I think it was pretty good job bringing the words alive. Okay. They weren't just reading it. Okay. Contextually, like if I weren't a Christian, I wouldn't have known it was Jesus. All right. Wow. Well, if you weren't, yeah, that's, that's good. That's okay. Good. All right. So what we need to do is find out how we can do that. So give me a stance. How we're going like to do it right now. Give me a stance that will let me know that this is Jesus, however you perceive him. So this would have to have some context. Uh, were they all? Were you all reading from the same place? From the same same translation? No, no. All right. So we need to have context. We need to make sure that these people understand that. Uh, you got a music idea? Do you do you do beats? Do you do beats? <laughs> no, I write songs. Yes, and you write songs. Yes, and I write songs. <laughs> <laughs> the songs have beats. Yes. Yes. I don't make them. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. So what we want to have here is context. If you're going to do the theater thing. We need to have context. I've given you permission that we're going to follow this story series and we're going to start talking about the theme of persecution. We're going to use this to uh, supplement my message and I want to have something visual and artistic. What we need here is uh, one, two, three, give me a stance. Let me see what your Jesus will look like. Just stand there for a Just stand there so I know. <coughs> Don't say anything. Just let me physicalize. <coughs> physicalize your Christ toward them. This is, these are, this <laughs> is, are what's, the, what's, no, wait, yes, who, what's the name of this whole section? It's the Beatitudes from what? Seven on the Mount. 
If it's a sermon, where's your congregation? That's who you're speaking to. Okay. <clears throat> if you're speaking to the congregation, speak to the congregation from your beginning. Okay. Step up. Find the answers. <coughs> and then finish. Got it? Okay. First of all, make your first line to the people. The first line to the people so they know. Then you can read back and forth. All right. Let's see what happens. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. Freeze. Go. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And that's right. And then the blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Priest. Priest. God, you can move your speaking. I'll you free. Mm -hmm. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. Come to your people. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Preach. Difference between the two. The two sequences of readings. Sure. You see them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All three. All three. Uh -huh. Do you feel more connected? Sure. Throughout yeah. them? Do you have a different sensibility mm -hmm. as, a, as a, a new person? Thank you. Have a seat. Here's part of the point of this. You know what the issues are. You want to get a drama ensemble that's going to replicate whatever it is, okay? If you're going to sell the sermon, or the pastor on the sermon, you get him on so he can say, you know, I, I think there's a possibility for this. What do you need? That's where you want to get. What do you need? I need more people. I need people to, let's do some artwork. Mm -hmm. How do we engage the other people? So that we create the atmosphere with the liturgy that people are going, hmm, this is interesting. Music. Our traditional service of worship, we have what? Songs at the beginning, something else, something else, and offering and some songs. <clears throat> However, what might happen if you started just with this? Yeah. Or what might happen if the corporate, if this was followed by a song of yours, and we went into something else, or we did three verses and then we did a song, and we did three verses and a song, you're getting the feel. Mm -hmm. These are the different types of things you can do with a service of worship using this structure. It's a, as an evangelistic outreach. You have to keep in mind the question that he brought up, Matt. Mm -hmm. That Matt brought up. Who's your audience? Who are you try to reach? Do they understand? Because most people, when they go into a church, don't recognize that there are different versions of the Bible. If you say, look through this and try to find it, I've been a lot with NIT, or NLV, uh, NLT, uh, LMLP, QRST, whatever the Bible is, and I'm not told. Okay. So all of this is to say it's a worship leading sermon supplement. If you're on the platform, whether these are the singers, these could be actors, these could be the musicians as your worship leaders, it's a personal eye contact kind of thing. Evangelistic outreach. You can take this kind of a thing, small worship, uh, theatrical experience, to a, where could you take something like this? If you just want to park, park. Sure. a park, you say? Okay. You could take it to uh, what, what we were talking about over. Uh, Sandy and Sandy was just talking about the uh, <clears throat> homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. 
you can take it to the place where the people are disenfranchised and aren't going to church. You don't have to feel compelled to have a great big experience and turn the whole theater, the whole space into a theater right away because me, the pastor, I'm not going to buy it. My elders aren't going to buy it. Yet. Yet. Yes. But if you go like into a, a region where they don't have all the bells and whistles, you can still do that. You can use dance. Blessed are they. So the simpler you are, starting with the small package, what are we doing this? Evangelistic outreach, which could be revival meetings, promoting church programs, advertising. What do we do with the announcements? Right. right up, just a short scene. Hi, we're having a cookout this week, aren't we? Yeah, have a taste. Now, people don't necessarily know it's, it's not so much practical. So looking at your, your content of your liturgy, of your bulletin, what are some things in the revival meetings? Celebrate the season, we talk about that all the time, Christmas, Easter, but also think about secular holidays. Short scenes, there's a lot available online, but you can also create your own things. For example, one time we had Veterans Day that it fell on a Sunday by anticipating, and this is why I was trying to get you to say, you know, what do you need from your servant, your pastor? You gotta have the series, you gotta have the elements way early. You can't wait to have him wait for this. And some pastors like to do that if you're gonna create the experience. <laughs> uh, we had a Veterans Day coming up, we looked at the calendar several months ahead, and we asked, the veterans, if you would write an experience, write us a short note by email, what, you know, when you were in the service, was the time when you saw God at work? We got three or four, we gave them, just like I've chosen three of you up here, and because being a veteran was a high quality in our place, they wanted to have some kind of veterans acknowledgement, so we put it there, and we just had those testimonies, and it flowed the message. So look for those things in your own church at those special holiday times. And if we were going to do the Sermon on the Mount, a beauty of this is, after you've seen the service, or heard these, what do you think you could do later? If you're going to plan to do the Sermon on the Mount, if you've got a wise team, just the Beatitudes, the best way we've found that was helpful for us was to get the people who are going to be on the platform reading through those scriptures and breaking them down just the same way we would break down a scene study. Or after you've seen it during the week, you could go out and have the people next week get ready and study more on their own. So what we've got in the corporate time is creating a common experience that gets people encouraged to come back next week. Is this, is this tracking? Okay. So, if we're talking about the atmosphere and the liturgy, it doesn't always have to be the same. So how does the, the different theater elements fit in so they don't have to be the same? Music, however you wish. Uh, the benediction is kind of a funny thing because what happens, what happens in your benediction at the end? What happens? Tell me. Peace be with you, like a peace be with you type of go in peace type of uh, prayer, you know. Okay, see you next week. Y'all yeah. Yeah. come back, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to come back? Do you want to come back? <laughs> what happens after you leave the experience when you go out the door? Uh, man, that's done. You have a coffee house, and people sit and linger, and they talk about the experience they just had. Do you want to invite your friends to come back next week? Do you wish to study further during the week? The benediction, benediction meaning good words. What are the good words that you wish to use to encourage people to come back? That spread your vision and your mission. 